Well, it seems like Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails are finally defeated in this episode of Dragon Ball Super. And alrighty guys, it is Quaman here today, bringing you my episode 81 review and my episode 82 preview of Dragon Ball Super. Now, there's a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's start off with Goku's Dilemma. Now, Goku's Dilemma in this episode was kind of cool because it puts him in a predicament in which if Goku defeats Bergamo... The entire multiverse is still in danger to get erased, you know, when the tournament of power actually takes place. And if Goku holds back or if Goku loses, well, if he loses by going all out, that would solve the situation. But if Goku loses and he holds back, then all of the universes would be wiped out on the spot. And the first thing I thought about is this fight reminded me a lot about Goku's fight against Yakon and also Goku's fight against Android 19. Now... It was similar to those two fights in a sense where Goku was pretty much empowering his opponent the more he hit them. And in this case, Bergama was getting stronger by Goku using physical attacks, unlike Yakon and Android 19, where they were getting strong when Goku was using a lot of energy attacks. And I thought the fight was pretty cool. Goku was, you know, landing all of those chalk mark punches on his belly, which was kind of interesting. And it was cool to see how Bergama can take the enemy's power and double it back. And we see the classic Dragon Ball fight taking place where, you know, Goku obviously starts off in his base form. He's holding back. They're always saving their true transformation for the end. And then he goes Super Saiyan. And when Bergamo started shooting Energy Blast at Goku once he grew to a large size, that sequence, not, not the actual fight itself, but that specific sequence where Goku was dodging all of those Energy Blasts that Bergamo reminded me a lot about his fight against Cell, where we see them right after they destroyed the Cell Games Arena, and Cell and Goku were just going back and forth with all those energy blasts, and also kind of similar to when he was fighting against Piccolo Jr., and he grew so large, and Goku was, you know, trying to use his small size as an advantage to kind of throw him off of his balance, so this fight took a lot of elements from previous Dragon Ball fights, and the cool thing about it is that Gohan started talking about how Goku knows he's making Bergamo stronger because the more Bergamo got more powerful, Goku actually got more excited in the fight. And it kind of shows you that Goku's mentality in these fights is kind of off. And the weird thing about it is, Bergamo, unlike the other characters, he was getting stronger, but it still seemed like he was getting damaged significantly by Goku's attacks. And obviously, Goku didn't use all of his power until the very end. But I kind of thought about it with the previous fights we've seen in Dragon Ball. If Bergamo is getting consistently more powerful over and over again, at some point Goku's attack should do less and less damage towards him. Which is what we've seen in the other previous Dragon Ball fights, unlike Yakon, because Yakon just pretty much exploded. But if you look at Super 17 or Android 19, the more energy he got, the more Goku actually struggled. So that was one thing I felt was kind of off. But Goku charged out so much power at the end, it kind of can explain how Bergamo was knocked out in an instant. Now, for the fight, compared to the other two, in the fight with Lavenda and the fight against Basil, I felt this was the least interesting because it really didn't show us anything new. It took a lot of elements from other fights, but because Goku was holding back so much until the very end when he went Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken... I felt like there wasn't as much tension as compared to the Lavenda fight where you see Gohan, you know, he's using everything in his power by being blind and using his key as like a, a radar to detect where, you know, Lavenda was flying around. Or if you look at the fight against Boo and Basil, you could tell Boo was really going out because he got pissed off that Mr. Satan was knocked out. So I did kind of feel like the fight wasn't as interesting in the previous two, but it was awesome visually compared to the others two. Now, in terms of some interesting details here, there's a lot of stuff to talk about this tournament. There's a lot of rules, and I don't want to go and break down every single one because I feel like that's unnecessary. But some of the key things I found was one of the rules says that you cannot fly outside of the world of void. So you have to keep your flying restricted to the actual tournament area itself. There's no weapons, which means that if there's going to be 80 fighters, I'm pretty sure a lot of them might be accustomed to using weapons, which is going to make it more of an even playing field. And as we've seen before with Frost versus Piccolo and Goku, that would obviously give them a significant advantage, even if they're weaker. 
No killing, I could have kind of seen that happening anyways, because, you know, obviously, Zeno's gonna erase them all anyways if they lose, so it doesn't really make a difference. But the cool thing about it was that this is gonna be a complete battle royale. So when I was hearing all of this news coming up to this, you know, this Universal Survival arc from weeks ago, I thought when the characters were gonna fight each other, it was gonna be like, okay, well, the universes that are gonna fight, it's gonna be this team versus this team and then it kind of like proceeds like a tournament but no it's gonna be 80 fighters all in one huge ass ring at a time and that's gonna be kind of crazy and i think it's gonna really force you know the toy animation creators to really be creative with the designs obviously there's gonna be a lot of throwaway characters that we're not gonna care about but for the important characters i think that's gonna be some cool stuff and the fight the fact that the fight is going to be 48 minutes immediately reminded me of basketball because I'm a huge basketball fan. <laughs> I kind of thought about it. It's like, it's like a basketball game where you have a full 48 minutes to fight. And although the episode didn't discuss it, they made a rule saying that whoever has the most fighters left after the time expires wins or whoever's the last one standing wins. And I kind of thought to myself, well, what if in a hypothetical scenario... You had two characters left from Universe 7 and then two characters left from, let's say, Universe 4. So let's say Goku and Vegeta versus two fighters from Universe 4 and the time runs out. So how do you dictate the rules then? Well, in that case, it would be even more like basketball where you would have like an overtime, even though it wasn't discussed. And I think that that would be a really cool way to have the Universe 7 fighters, you know, be a lot more interactive and you know working together instead of just making it a final guy standing scenario and the 48 minutes to me didn't really mean that much in terms of time for dragon ball because if you could stretch out a you know a bunch of filler fights between goku and frieza over five minutes you call who, who knows what could happen over the stretch of 48 so yeah so those are pretty much the only things i found interesting to talk about with the rules oh yeah and let me also mention that the other thing <laughs> I found cool is that you're supposed to throw your opponent out of the ring. And me being a, a long-term Nintendo fan, I was immediately thinking about Super Smash Bros. Where, like, you kind of try to throw your opponent off the field. And in the case of Dragon Ball char characters, since they can all fly, if they fly out of the arena, it would pretty much give them a significant advantage. It would be like the anti-Super Smash Bros. So, that's kind of some things that were running through my mind as I heard... You know the rules and the last thing here is talking about topo now topo i was talking to ken zyro on facebook about this it seems like his motivation to fight goku is the mo is the whole moral of this episode here because goku's being looked at as the bad guy and Toppo kind of looks at Goku in that sense and Goku even shows a little bit of an ego when he's talking about hey bring all of your best fighters and I'm gonna take all of them out like Goku's being the cocky guy in this fight and I, I found it interesting when Toppo was talking about Goku being evil and Goku's like evil you say huh and to me I feel like that's the whole gist of what this universal survival arc is as the Dragon Ball community has been discussing Goku's being looked at as the bad guy because in a sense he's in he's jeopardizing all of these universes strictly for his own desire to fight and if you guys know a little bit about Toriyama one thing that Toriyama hated about the animated version of Dragon Ball is that he felt they tried to make Goku seem too heroic when in fact Goku was a very selfish character from his intentions and he cared strictly about fighting and you know he's a good guy but he really cared about it to test himself and to challenge himself and I felt that that was a good thing you know to see kind of Tapo having this extra exhibition fight at the end to kind of put this whole tournament of power into fruition but ultimately guys i think the episode was solid i think if uh, another detail that i noticed is that talking about the mortal levels a lot of you guys have been on and off about is the mortal level referring to a person being stronger is it referring to a person you know having a higher quality of life and the episode implies what geekdom and i were talking about and a lot of people disagreed with us that you know it's about the quality of your gods which is why those four universes that were exempt they're exempt because their gods are of a higher quality which makes their universe of a higher quality and think about this guys if the top four universes had the strongest entities in their universe why would zeno want to exclude them because don't you want the strongest possible guys 
fighting in a tournament to make it more interesting. You're literally taking the eight weakest universes and making them fight, which to me, I don't, th I think defeats the purpose of a tournament. So I kind of wanted to address that. And like I said, guys, this was a solid episode. I think the action was all right. It wasn't as cool as the previous episodes, but I'd have to give it four stars. There really wasn't anything amazing about it, but it was solid and it did the job. So, to talk about some pr predictions for the upcoming preview, it seems like we're seeing Goku fighting against Tapo, and he uses Super Saiyan Blue as what it appears to be like near the end of the episode, as I would predict. And considering the fact that Goku has already fought Bergamo, he was a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, that makes me wonder that Goku's probably really friggin' exhausted. I mean, even though he didn't fight Bergamo that long, that takes a lot of energy out of you, so even if Tapo wins, he's fighting a significantly, I guess you could say, used up Goku. You know, so that's one thing I would say, and honestly, if Goku manages to win this fight, I think that's actually going to do good for all the other universes, because it's going to make them want to train more for this tournament of power, and it's going to make Goku seem like the bad guy, which makes it even more interesting. It's kind of like in sports, when you have that villain team, you train harder and you play harder just so you can defeat them. I know this for a fact because I'm a big Heat fan. So that's all I've got to say about the preview. And for my key discussion today, guys, this is something I want you guys to shoot back at me. If this tournament of power is going to have limited flying outside of the arena and it's going to be a battle royale with all those characters, one thing I thought about is, are Piccolo and Majin Buu kind of on like uber tier? Because A, they can heal themselves, but one thing I noticed is that Piccolo's ability to grab people with his stretchy arms and Majin Buu's ability to manipulate his body and like throw people into like his gumball attack like we've seen the Guru Guru Gum guy, Giron, the Giron, the big dinosaur looking guy who fought Goku in Dragon Ball. When Goku fought against him, if, if Buu and Piccolo can use their stretchy arms and their, you know, their chewy bubblegum you know matter to like throw opponents into that's gonna give them a pretty big advantage because you could just pretty much take a guy and just throw him out of the ring or just grab grab them like you do on xenoverse and fling them out so with everything else said please remember to rate comment and subscribe and remember as i always say to have a great day guys and hopefully the pride troopers are gonna put up a good battle